Testing, 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 one, two, three. All right, everyone, hopefully we are live. Welcome back to another Friday night live stream here at Christ Centered Ironworks. Welcome, welcome. Jessica's already been reading out some names that are already in the chat. Um, all you early birds, we thank you very much for showing up to the stream so early and hanging out with one another and uh, checking stuff out. So a couple real quick things before we get started. Let us know if our audio's good. I'm gonna ask Jessica how she's doing this evening. Tell us how we're doing. And uh, how are you doing, Jessica? I'm doing good this evening. Um, I do have a heater by me for those who are gonna say like, oh, it's so cold there. Um, yeah, we're probably sitting at about uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit or a little bit colder here in Northern Michigan. And it has been snowy here too. I've seen some of you guys say it's been a little snowy. So let us know as well if my audio is coming in clear. Yeah, so we got about uh, just a little over about four and a half inches of snow between last night and this morning. As you can tell, we have refluxed Roy's floor. <laughs> I've got to get that siding fixed at some point. <laughs> yeah, whenever it snows about four inches out there, it's two inches in here. If it snows a foot out there, it's six inches in here. So uh, definitely need to take and get the siding fixed in the big skylights that are uh, plaguing me right now currently. But Anyway, so welcome everyone. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I know that there's been a ton of other content that you can watch and we're just super thankful that you guys are here and watching us. Um, so like I said, real quick, let's go to camera number two, Jess, make sure that that's working fine. Everything's going good. We did do a couple test strains, but we just wanna make sure everything's running, running smooth. So tonight we're gonna be foraging a colonial style trivet. Um, I say colonial style because it's not going to be the definition if you do a Google search or a Pinterest search or something like that. It won't be that really basic or plain tapered thing. You know me, I have to do pretty stuff, so I can't just do basic or simple things. I mean, I can, but I like to spice things up a bit. So the style we're going to go for and the reason why I call on it I'm calling it a colonial style trivet is because of the simplicity. A lot of colonial ironwork was very simple or very elegant. It was very, um, it wasn't for opulence. It wasn't for over the top, really showy or anything like that. Um, as, you, as you know, in colonial America, you know, there was some disparity amongst classes there. So, you know, you had the really wealthy that were from Europe that showed up and uh, the barons and stuff and they could afford all the imports and everyone else just kind of dealt with, you know, the simple steel items. Uh, so anyway, so it's gonna have a colonial influence to it, but it's gonna be pretty neat. I'm gonna do my own little uh, take on that. And we'll be working on this over the next three live streams, possibly a fourth. Uh, but the goal tonight is to go ahead and get the ring, the outside ring all welded up and dressed to a nice perfect circle and then we will work on the decorative elements if we have time. But we will also be giving away some things as door prizes in here. I'll pull them up over to camera number two, Jessica. Um, so tonight's door prizes, we're gonna continue on these little chisels and punches. Uh, I find that they're really handy for me to make in between heats. Uh, so we'll be giving away three different slitting chisels and one square punch. So there'll be a square punch we'll be giving away and we'll be giving away three different uh, slitting chisels. Unlike in times prior, these are all hardened and tempered. So these are all good to go. So they'll go right into a package and get shipped out right away uh, as soon as you guys order them. And also, Mr. Barrett, uh, JT Barrett, Drayson's Forge, I want to say a big apology first off that I did not show off your great Christmas gift to Jessica and I. Um, in one of our live streams, and we're so late, it's like February now, <laughs> uh, but better late than never. We're gonna show this little dude off right now because it's absolutely awesome, and I think everybody here will get a kick out of it. So I'm gonna hide it, let's go to camera two. Okay, so I'm gonna read the tag first and foremost. It says, when Roy feels you worthy of his flux, let him measure it thusly one spoonful at a time. Be well, Roy and Jess Grayson. Um, so come with this little tag. This thing is absolutely epic. 
it's this little flux measuring flask. So you've got a little copper handle there made from a piece of copper pipe. Um, awesome. It's got a cork in it. And look at this little tiny hammer. It comes with a little tiny hammer on it. I don't know if I can see that. Does that work okay? Can everybody yeah. see that all right? Okay, so there we go. So we got this little tiny hammer. And when you pop the cork off of it, there's my little copper spoon. One spoonful at a time. <laughs> now that's truly Roy size flux right there. Um, and then that's not all. Let me go in here. And then there's a little, I'll have to set the rest of this down so it doesn't fall. There's this little pair of tongs he made. Little pair of copper tongs that actually function. So that is really awesome, great work. Uh, just I know how much time it takes to work on miniature stuff like this. It's not easy. You did a wonderful job, sir. Wonderful job. Way to go. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. And this thing has been sitting proudly on my gift shelf that we have inside the house. It's all lit up nice and under a light and the whole bit. So thank you very, very, very much. Appreciate that. You go back to main cam. Everyone is quite fond of um, that neat little um, jar that he made and, and all the little tools. Yeah, yeah he it's amazing. Them. I haven't put any flux in it yet, and, uh, but I will. I'll put a little bit of flux in it and then I can take that around when I'm, actually I'll probably take that to Tillers with me uh, to explain about how little flux I use <laughs> in my day-to-day -day forging. Um, yeah, the class is already sold out at Tillers, which is great. I'm going to be teaching a forge welding class. So over there, that's in southern Michigan. So looking forward to doing that here at the end of the month. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So who do we all have, Jess? And shout out some names there, and we'll get going here. All right. Yeah, we have quite a few people already. Uh, only about eight minutes into the stream. Looks like we're sitting at about 102 viewers. So thank you guys if you've uh, shared this stream around and invited a friend, that's awesome. We have Neil Graham, we have Charming Hollow Forge, we have SNS Smithing, Robert Badgett, uh, Wiley Archangel Craftswork, Mars Rivets Clyde, and also I want to say thank you Liam Buck for the 10 euro super chat. Awesome. <laughs> thank you very much for the super chat, Liam Buck. Um, Hello everyone, good to see everybody in the house this evening. Again, thank you, thank you for being here. So, starting stock size. Uh, this is for everybody who wants to undertake this. We are working with three quarter inch by quarter inch thick uh, flat bar material. We're gonna be bending that the hard way. Uh, for you guys across the pond, that is 20 mil by six mil thick. And we're going for a circle of roughly eight inches in diameter six to eight inches in diameter. So that's 150 to about 200 mil um, in diameter. That's the kind of the circle uh, sweet spot we're looking for. Obviously, if you plan on putting larger pots on it, uh, on this trivet, then you know you just make it larger or smaller. Really a small one, six to eight inches in diameter, that really accommodates everything from probably the smallest pots that you would put on it, like a tea kettle, all the way up to much bigger pots, usually. With, uh, within reason, anyhow, I should say. So let me go ahead and shut down this damper just a bit more. We got a bit more airflow for than what my me running my mouth will take. <laughs> so, so the first step in this process is that we actually need to take and put a small scarf or a little bit of a toe on this piece. There's a lot of different ways that we could do a lap welded joint because we're gonna bend this around and we're gonna lap weld it. There's different ways of making this ring work for different applications. Since this is a very low stress thing, it does not need to be super structural. So we're gonna do a very simple lap joint, but we still need to thin out the toe of the scarf and make a bit of a scarf on it. So that's gonna be our first step. And we'll go to the anvil cam for that, Jessica. So we're gonna start by holding it up. at a nice angle like that and doubling the angle of our hammer, like so, to just thin, to 
kind of point the end of the bar a little bit. Then we're going to come back to the edge of the anvil and about where the bevels are, where the bevels start on this piece, hopefully you guys still see this, where the bevels start on this piece, that's where we're going to drive in a little bit of a shoulder. So I'm going to come in right there. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. We good? Okay. I would bring you all in a lot closer, except for the fact that I do not want to bring the camera in that close uh, for the welding splatter that's going to come off. So we'll put that back in and we can go back to main cam. And uh, I will work, so I will do this one more heat because I need to thin that toe just a bit more. One thing you want to watch is you don't want the toe of your scarf to get really super long. You're just increasing the surface area that you have to weld in or the, the surface area of that toe to weld in. And a lot of times it won't blend in properly if you get it too long. So um, you'll see a result of that if I happen to thin this a bit too much. Again, with a little bit of file work, you won't know it's there. And you know, by the time it's by the time you do your finishing work, you won't know the, tar the, the scarfs there. A lot of old iron work, you will see scarfs from time to time. It just depends. It depends on what the item was used for and, uh, you know, application, money, clients' money, things like that uh, depended a lot on how the job came out in the end. So we'll t go back to the anvil real quick, Jess. We'll thin that toe just a bit more. I'm thinning the edges of it, and you're gonna get a bit of a dog bone looking thing. I'll bend that back. Again, it's not much, but it's just enough that it'll catch. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. So we thinned it out and we kind of got a bit of a Mickey Mouse ear thing going here. Bring out Mr. Thing. A lobe here and a lobe over there. Just kind of hit the corners and pulled those out a little bit to thin them. So that's a really nice short scarf and that's what we're wanting on this. If you get a really long scarf on here, like I said, it won't blend in. By the time you get out here, because of how thin that material is, by heating it up, it'll either burn and roast off or even as you pull it out, it'll chill and just go right to nothing. So, you know, you won't, it'll drop below welding heat. All right, so we got that good going. Now we're gonna start bending it around. What we got going on, Jess? Sure, yes, we've had quite a few people. They did notice the sign behind you. Uh, yes, it is new, and if C. Struble says, what is the story on the new sign behind Roy? So, the story. Are we on my mic? Okay, good to go. Um, so, the story, great question. So, glad you all noticed. I made up this little sign here. It's got some LED lights in it, um, or some RGB lighting, or whatever you call it, just LED lights, basically. Uh, and it also works, it works wirelessly and all that jazz. So I made this sign for the shop, not only to take and spruce it up a little bit, but we haven't quite been able to figure out the software just yet. But what happens is with this sign or what's supposed to happen or what will happen eventually, should I tell it? Should I say it? Should, or should I let it be a surprise? Well, yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and say it. Okay, all right, I'll put it out there. So what happens? So the big goal on this, and we haven't been able to get the software to work just yet on it, I don't know, don't know what happened with it here, um, is that when you super chat, that sign's supposed to change to the color of your super chat. So, um, so hopefully by next live stream, when we give away the anvil, that we're gonna be giving away another 66 pounder, that'll be up and running. So this way, it's just another way of acknowledging when someone does a super chat, and you guys like, no, I want it made green. And then if you do it, I think it's like a $5 chat 
or something that's a green color, the sign will turn green. You're like, no, I want it blue, which is like a $2 chat, it'll turn blue. One of those sort of things. So um, kind of a cool piece of tech. It didn't quite get going, but we already had the sign lit, so it just kind of, we were going to surprise everybody, you know, whenever you guys chat and kind of let you figure it out on your own, but yeah, it didn't work. Technology, eh? <laughs> so that's, that's the story. That's the story behind the sign. Uh, but yeah, so I, I completely made the sign. I plasma cut out the logo, did all that jazz, of course. I mean, you think I'd let anybody else do that. Um, but uh, yeah, pretty simple to make, a lot of fun, and I think, it, I think it looks pretty epic in the background there. So, so get used to seeing that in the videos, because I think that's where it's going to stay. Ultimately, we might drop it down just a little bit. I don't know, it's kind of weird because it's on this big, nice 8-inch beam, so that might not be possible for us to move it without it being too awkward and out from it, but there you go. So now you know, inquiring minds. Doe Creek Forge says, does it change the flux color? L-O-F-L. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, yeah, no, it doesn't change the flux colors, but it's got some flux laying across there, so yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, so we're good and hot, Jess. Let's go over to the anvil and we'll bend this ring. Okie doke. So now we're going to try to start our bend in real nice and close up here first. And if you've ever tried to bend a bar hard ways, it doesn't like to do it. One big trick to doing this is to keep it close to the horn where you're hitting with your hammer to keep it close to the horn. It'll allow you to get that to go around. Just like so. So we're starting to bend it. Again, if you work close to the horn right in here, it, it kind of almost does like a pinching action versus if you hit here, if you hit out here, all that force goes into buckling the piece sideways. So if you hit up close to the horn, not on the horn, but close to the horn, it will bend a lot more readily. Think about taking little tiny bites, little tiny hammer bites as you go around there. And then once I start getting this around a bit more, I'm going to size it by the base of my horn here. The base of my horn is almost that six, about that six and a half inches in diameter at the base here. So uh, I'm going to start sizing it around that. And that'll start giving me a much better arc. Let's see here. Uh, Stephen Ranty says, I think the sign is at a good level. You can see it even with you at the anvil. Cool. So, oh, all right. You guys said my mic is too quiet. I'm going to try to speak up a little bit. Right now it says it's set to full volume. So you'll have to know if me speaking up helps some. Roy tells me I'm a really quiet talker. Hold uh, the mic to your face. Okay. There. <laughs> it looks like I'm talking into a big black thing. Okay. Uh, also, Yamas, thank you for the $5 super chat. He says, Roy, you need a wall like mine with all the things people send behind you. Yeah, I like that ideal. Uh, or idea. Sorry, I'm working on it. Um, the only problem I don't like about that idea is since this is uninsulated and it's all those things, when people send me iron stuff or like that copper, that thing would be brown within a month um, being out here. So uh, again, that's the only reason why I don't do that. But I do like that concept. Although when people do send me something, I do put it in a, I've got like this china hutch inside our house, like a curio cabinet that's got lights and stuff. And we put those things in there. As long as they're smaller items, if they're too big, then they don't go in there. They, they either go to the storage or I find a, I'll find a place eventually to hang them in the shop. So. Great idea, and thank you for the super chat. Thank you, sir. God bless you, Yamas. Man, I really wish this sign was working. Yeah, I, 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 
I know. I'm overlooking at the activity log. It says it tried to run it, but it failed. So uh, okay. I don't know. Well, maybe next time. <laughs> Thank you, Yamas. Thank you. Oh. We're hot. Let's go over the anvil. Now you don't have to worry about getting this perfectly spherical just yet because what's going to end up happening is we're going to need to take a guess and cut this off. And we'll have to put a scarf on the other end. So one of the benefits of working on a long bar versus pre-cutting a piece is the fact that you can dis how long or how wide this piece is going to be as you go. So you can kind of make it up as you go. If you start with just one solid piece, you cut it off. And if you were wrong with your measurements in any way, there's no coming back from it. So it's kind of nice to have the extra length in here so you know where to cut it off. Usually, if you come about an inch from the tip here, an inch to inch and a half from here, from what I've noticed, from what I've noticed, I'm trying to just get this in the shot to where it makes sense. From here, if you come forward an inch, inch and a half, and draw a line straight down and cut it off, that works about right. Once you get this visually looking, the diameter that you're after. That's usually how you do it, or that's how I do it, and it tends to come out right. Or you can just break out tape measures and things like that. Fancy tools for fancy people. All right, so now it's at a point, go up main cam. Now it's at a point where I think I'm gonna cut it off. I don't want this to keep coming around and end up interfering with my scarf. I'm gonna go ahead and scarf it. Like I said, I'm gonna come up about an inch to inch and a half, come down and I'm gonna cut the bar right there and scarf it and then I'll bend that around. That may look obsessive, but you gotta remember, this is a curve, this is an arc, and curves take up way more linear inches of steel than you would expect. And this is a point where I'd like to point out something about, say, traditional smithing in a way. A lot of times, a lot of times we forget, you know, when we're doing things now, you know, we like to try to be as precise as we can, or we're trying to replicate something that maybe we've seen, and we're trying to be as accurate as possible with a tape measure, or with calipers, or this, that, and what have you. And really, if you think about it, say, 150 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, people were making products out of necessity. They were necessity items. They weren't necessarily uh, just like gift items or just, you know, frivolous spending things. If you were making a trivet or a cooking trivet, it was in order to take and supply a home with a utensil, a tool to take and use to cook things with. Um, you know, similar like tongs or files. Doesn't mean that you should do a cruddy job, but a lot of the measurements if just go online and Google it or pick up some historical books and you'll see a lot of measurements change. A lot of dimensions change from, it could even be in the same shop. Some will be a light, slightly bigger, some will be slightly smaller because it was a new customer. And did it have to be dead on a certain size to hold a pot? Probably not. So it might vary just a little bit and that was just part of the art and a part of the craft. Now, when commercialization of forging and stuff comes about and when you see later on in the industrial revolution and you get a lot of castings and things of that nature then you start seeing an uptick of smiths trying to compete being as accurate as humanly possible with their forgings so you know take that in mind for yourself when you're making something like this. Just because I'm making this six inches, it might come out to six and a quarter, might come out to six and a half. I have no idea, I don't really care. It's gonna be a circle that's gonna hold a pot. It's gonna have three legs. <laughs> that's, the, that's the criteria. <laughs> that's the criteria of it. So just keep that in mind when you're designing your own stuff, when you're making your own things. Just because Roy says like, hey, we want an eight inch circle, doesn't mean it has to be eight inches. 
inch is if you're following along with the project and you come out with a seven and a half inch circle, it's seven and a half inches. It's really not going to matter. So if you want it to be exactly eight inches, then do the math, do the proper measurements, you know, lock in your forging steps so you're doing well and then go on with that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I was just going to mention uh, Valhalla Ironworks says, I use baling wire bent to shape to work out how much length I need and bend it to shape and then stretch it straight and measure it. Yep, that's, that's a great, that's a perfectly valuable, valid thing to do. I've done that certainly on certain projects when I've needed to map an exact drawing of something or be in a very specific space. I was making something for a very specific dimensions um, or space. For the most part though, I am a Smith by eye kind of guy. I am. I will measure some stuff if I'm having to make two or three things alike or exactly alike. I'll do that, but if it's an artistic piece, architectural piece, things of that nature, usually I'm not measuring so much. I smith a lot by eye and just kind of guesstimating weights and volumes. And thank you for being here, sir. Valhalla. Let's go over to the anvil, Jess, and we'll cut this off real quick. So again, we'll come forward a little bit. Cut that off, and straighten the bar a little bit so this way it's ready for the next use. And then go grab the piece that jumped way off into the distance. Hear that sizzling? That's a sizzling of a snow covered floor. Moo ha ha. Hardy tool off there. And now I'll just go ahead and take this another heat. You might be tempted to try to whale on it right now, but if you do, it's just going to buck around on you a whole lot. Yes, we have, well, I don't know. I, don't, I haven't seen any comments. Well, I mean, well, I've seen plenty of comments. Whoa. Complaints, sorry, I was thinking C words, the complaints one was, was the one I was trying to say. Um, Doe Creek Forge says $5 um, super chat to help with the sign. Thank you very much. And Amy Groff says, give us a $20 super chat, says from hands, winky face, because his PayPal is struggling, LOL. <laughs> 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 Thank you all very much for the super chats. Appreciate it. And uh, Hans, I hope your su I, I hope your PayPal uh, gets back to full health on you <laughs> so, someday soon. <laughs> sorry, sorry, we broke you, buddy. <laughs> in the last several live streams, um, we appreciate you, Amy and Hans. Thank you, guys. Um, let's go over the anvil real quick, Jess. This is beyond hot of what we need here. All right, so now on this one, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna have my shoulder up. I forgot to put in my taper. That's gonna kinda of hang me up a little bit. That's okay. I still was able to pull the wings out just like so. Again, we're looking for that nice shorter scarf. So this one I did opposite of the other one. I laid, hopefully you guys can see the shoulder. So we've got a shoulder here, we've got a shoulder here Round things are hard to show off to a camera. It's probably, I, I'm going to pick a better angle next time. There's a shoulder here, then when you flip it around there should be a shoulder here. So you're making a shoulder on the top side of this one, on the opposite end of the bar. That's how it should look. And then the top side of that one should be the bottom side of this one when it wraps around. Just keep that in mind. They're, the shoulders are made on opposite ends of the bar. That way they come, come around and nest properly. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. So basically they come around and they nest like this properly. If you put them on the same side, they wouldn't nest. So you want them to nest properly like so. Questions? 
we have several questions for you. Uh, let's see, one's from Ingerwar Eidelvin. Sorry, I probably butched that. It says, I saw your comment at Ukrainian Blacksmith Channel, Roy. I guess you watch a lot of YouTube, don't you? I watch a fair amount of YouTube. Um, I kind of, I'll say, I say watch loosely. Um, I actually listen to a lot of YouTube. So, um, you know, if there's other people's live streams, sometimes, you know, I'm there. I'm just not commenting. I'm busy working and I've got you in like earbuds as I work, um, you know, so just so I can keep my finger on the pulse and hear all the bad things people are saying about me around the net, you know, because my ears are burning, my nose is itching, you know, so. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, <coughs> uh, yeah, I follow a lot of different channels out there. I watch a lot of different tech channels. I watch a lot of different blacksmithing channels of all kinds. Um, listen to anyhow. Occasionally I will watch a video uh, if it interests me enough or if it's around a subject that I'm already working on, um, which is kind of, I think that's kind of the habit of most of everybody. So let's go to the anvil, Jess. All right, we're getting hot. I gotta put it, make sure I get a good sharp curve in this. I wanna start it curving. I'm gonna end up needing so that's where I want it, that leg's where I want it. Now I need to heat this other leg and bring it to where it needs to be. Hopefully you guys see how we're doing that. So I just knocked that down, so this way they'll pass each other and then we'll close up the joint. Once we get the other leg bent. This doesn't really take that long uh, to do, generally speaking. It doesn't take that long to do when you're not talking and running your mouth. <laughs> when you run your mouth like I am, it takes a little while. Once we get this bent and we get it prepped, get it setting on one another, um, things like that, we're ready for the weld. We're probably going to give away a chisel um, before we go to the weld and things of that nature. So until then, we'll take some more comments while this warms up a bit. There we go. Mike G, we are doing good today. A uh, little chilly, but you know, that's winter for you. <laughs> and also, let's see, we had a question from Stressmaster who asked, do you preheat your anvil on these cold days? Nope, good question. I never preheat my anvil. Um, I find preheating an anvil is an absolute waste of time. And for me personally, Theoretically, I don't think it makes any sense to actually preheat an anvil. Um, point being is say an anvil's 90 degrees and your steel's 1800 degrees, the anvil's gonna suck out heat at about the same rate. It's not gonna matter if, you're, if your anvil say 20 degrees cold and your, and your steel's again 1800 degrees as far as rather your work time at the anvil it, it, it's, it's kind of the same. I think that there's such a small, insignificant difference to heat an anvil. Now, if you're working with a smaller anvil where you can preheat it and you can take it up to say 90, 100 degrees or so, and you're working little tiny, little fidgety pieces, uh, there's some merit to that. But if you're working on small fidgety pieces, you could also get an anvil a lot closer to your forge where your forge fire is and it just kind of stays naturally heated and warmed up and you have less distance traveled. Uh, but when it comes to it, if you have a piece that's 1800 degrees, it, it's kind of like it's hitting, it's kind of like that old adage of say, say if there's a wall, uh, you know, say if there's a wall and you run into it at 100 miles an hour, boom, right? But say there's a car that's traveling 30 miles an hour and there's another car traveling at 130 miles an hour and they collide. It's very similar to hitting that same brick wall. Very similar, marginally different. <laughs> so that's kind of how I feel about preheating anvils. Um, and if you're not careful, you can end up wrecking an anvil. Um, I've seen guys walk away and leave you know, weed burners just sitting on their anvil and go get a cup of coffee and 
totally forget that weed burner was running on the anvil and the thing screaming hot and turning colors. So go ahead, Jess. Okay. Um, yes, I was just, <laughs> you guys are going to make everybody hungry. They're all sharing the, their bacon wrapped recipes. So like bacon wrapped chocolate, bacon wrapped scallops, um, bacon wrapped jalapenos <laughs> with cheese. <laughs> so yeah, you guys, you could start a cooking show, I guess, off of bacon wrapped foods. <laughs> all right, let's go to the <laughs> animal. All right. Let's go, right. That was totally random. Very random. <laughs> No, no one was listening to a word I was saying. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to hear your words, Roy. Darn yuppie. Okay, so there we go. We're all prepped. And ready for our weld. Now, if you notice, this is not a perfect circle, and it doesn't have to be, because what we're going to do is once we forge weld this together in this plane, this way, once we forge weld it from the top down, we will also have to dress this up, and that's when we'll get that nice roundness to it. Right now, the only important thing is to get the two faces mated together like so. And we'll see if this comes out to check it check it up here off camera oh we were almost there almost there almost guessed it right it came out to five and a half inches far from the six i was shooting for and i believe i even said we were going to do eight didn't i i cut it off way too soon i did that's all right in my head it was supposed to be five and a half inches all, all along. <laughs> Again, not uberly critical for what we're, what we're accomplishing this evening. It's gonna be a very small pot rack, a very small trivet, but that's okay. That'll, even that size will handle several larger pot sizes, a good size skillet anyhow, so. We got a 12 inch skillet, it's already gonna be six inches in diameter or five and a half. By the time I weld it in, it's gonna stretch out some too as well. So it'll probably be dead on six when I get it done. All right, are we giving away something? I think Roy said we're gonna give away something before we forge weld that. Yes, you are right. You are right. Plus I need to get a little bit more coke up here. So here a second, but let's go ahead and give something away, shall we? All right, we're gonna give two different things away. Starting, we're gonna give away a square punch, just like so. And we are going to give away, and these are gonna be two separate people that are gonna get this, a slitting chisel. All hardened and tempered and ready to go. Ready to go to work. So. Let's give the square punch away. You guys know how this worked. Go ahead and just start dropping your comments in the comment section down below if you would like to take and get this or win this. Um, we will ship these anywhere in the United States or around the world, doesn't matter. So if you live across country somewhere and you want this, still comment, you can get it. All right, are we at the anvil cam? Can they see? All right, so you ready? Ready to scroll? Are there a bunch of people commenting? Okay, good, it's good to see, all right. Drum roll. All right, the winner of this one is Will Batrick, says me, 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 me. Will Batrick, congratulations. You got a square punch from yours truly. All right, so let me set that down. It's gonna be the square punch for Will Batrick, right? Find a place over here to off camera to set these down. I don't find a, that way I'm not picking up the same ones again. All right, let's go ahead and do the slitting chisel. And we will drum roll. Start commenting. All 
All right, this one is going to Johnny Sykes, who says, pick me, Pap. Ha ha. Oh, congratulations, Johnny Sykes. Get us your info, contact, all that stuff. Yep, it's down in the description down below. Send us your info and how we can ship this to you. Thank you, thank you for being here, and congratulations. Um, I think we'll also give away a couple stickers at this time. What do you think? A couple sticker bundles. Just as door prizes, just to thank everybody for being here. We can go up the main cam. Oh, this year we actually got, um, we actually have more special stickers in from uh, Dana Maggiore. This one's a special sticker this year and this year only as the year of the anvil. So we got the year of the anvil sticker. We're going to be adding these to the packets um, throughout all of 2020. Again, they're kind of a special thing. So um, if you want to get on those. And then we'll also have all of our regular Christ-centered ironworks uh, branded stickers. And I guess we can go down to the main cam and show these off a little bit better. The anvil cam. Sorry. So there you go. That's what those look like. We got the Year of the Anvil and the Christ Centered Ironworks uh, logo, so uh, stickers for someone out there. All right, let's give a couple of these away. That's what those are going to look like. Set that there. All righty. And the first winner is. This one goes to Curiosity, Curiosity Forge, who says spam. <laughs> <laughs> well, Curiosity Forge, congratulations. Uh, you know the drill, sir. Just get a hold of us and uh, with your shipping info, and we'll send it over to you. And are we on the main cam, by the way? We are now. Or are they all looking at my super sweet apron? We're on the main cam. Okay, we're on the ma main cam. All right, we'll do the main cam. How's that sound? So, all right. Next. Ready. ready. Are they ready? Ready for another sticker bundle? Ready? And drum roll. And more. And more. All right, this one is going to Mars, uh, Mars Rivest, who says me. Mars, congratulations. Me? You got it. Me? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you for being here. Um, again, contact us. You can get a hold of us there through the description. Go down in the description and uh, send us an email and uh, we'll get you taken care of with a sticker bundle. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. If y'all didn't win, trust me, there'll be some more going away. Uh, we'll be giving some other stuff away. And real quick, we'll take another little break here. Uh, before we go and do this, I want to talk a little bit about these tongs that I've got, these tong blanks that I got from RX Tongs when you're ready to go to camera two. Okay. So I, right here, uh, don't comment in the comment section. We're not giving them away this live stream, but I was given these by RX Tongs to make some tutorial videos, kind of like some how to's to put these together and do little reviews and let them know what I think about them. Uh, I was given these free of charge and they were also kind enough to support us in our last great Christmas giveaway live stream. Um, so he, right here's a pair of number nines. These are very similar to like the farrier type of tongs uh, that you see out there that have like the little cup in the middle of them. And they're really great for holding on to flat stock. This here is a number four pair of tongs. It's very much like a pause tongs in a way, but it's more of a bolt jaw. So it's a very heavy bolt jaw. Um, I'll be making a review video on those. And then also, then here's a box jaw pair of tongs. And then here's just a basic pair of tongs. Oh, you need something, Jess? Are you okay? Okay, all right. So why are you showing us this, Roy? Why are you teasing this? These will be a part of our giveaways going, going forward. These here, these four pair here, once I get the videos made. So I'll be giving these away and some of the, as the door prizes in the upcoming live stream. So uh, you'll definitely wanna make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications and set it for all notifications. Otherwise you won't know when we go live and then you'll miss out and that ain't no good. 
uh, especially if you want to start winning items like this. Um, it is my goal this year, all year of 2020, to celebrate by giving away anvils, giving away tongs, giving away punches, giving away tools, giving away just blacksmithing tools to help beginning blacksmiths or even guys that have been at it a while and just need a boost, need some tooling, right? It is my goal to take and spend some of the hard-earned cash and some of our daily supporters cash that they watch us on a regular basis, the earnings that we get in through the YouTube and stuff, um, to take and re-put it out there all year of 2020 into our community and re-bless you all. And uh, just to say thank you. Thank you for being with us for the last three years. Um, we just greatly appreciate each and every last one of you sticking through all of Roy's weirdness. <laughs> for all these years, all the terrible videos, all the great tutorials and horrible tutorials and um, yeah, just everything. Um, if you guys noticed, there was a credit reel at the beginning of the video. That's one way we acknowledge our supporters and you can ultimately just give them all a hand clap if you can in the comment section down below of everyone who supports us through the super chat because of good proportion of all of that income that comes in from the super chats go to buying the anvils to ship them to pay for the shipping to ship all of the door prizes to anywhere in the world you know that really does come in and that is a big part of helping us to be able to do this so again thank those people give them your praise hand claps that whole thing clappy hands winky faces whatever you do whatever emojis you want to give them um, thumbs up any other symbol except the middle one you can't do that middle one uh, keep the bird <laughs> in the cage uh, but yeah just just thank those people um, because they allow us to do that so again exciting stuff coming up and like i said in the next live stream next friday night's live stream we will be giving away the 66 pound anvil um, just one. So we've already given one away and it went to a beginning smith um, that's just getting their shop set up. So that's super awesome. I'm glad that that happened. And we're hoping that the next 66 pounder will go to somebody who needs it. And if you're like, shucks, I lost. Oh, well, I don't have to watch Roy anymore. Well, you'll miss out on your 10 other chances this year at winning an anvil. So <laughs> we'll be giving one away every single month if you didn't know yet. That's why we're calling it, hence, the year of the anvil. Huh? Yep. yep. So uh, if you, and that's part of the sticker packs as well. That's why we went and got some more from Dana Maggioria. He, uh, thank you, sir. That, I mean, he supports us in a great way with that, that contribution to the show. We can do that. It's with the stickers, you know, and that way we can kind of bless people with kind of a rarity item. You know, there's not going to be 20,000 of these things made. No you know, you know that you were a part of the year of the anvil. You were, you did the support, you guys were watching the streams and you know, so therefore you're the lucky ones. That's the way I see it. Anyways, so thank you. Thank you all very much for your support. God bless each and every last one of you. While he refuels the forge here, uh, I will answer a couple of questions. Dustin Roberts, a uh, good anvil for a beginner. This year we are doing a whole thing about anvils. So um, if you wanna check out our, we have a whole playlist around the 66 pound Amazon anvil. Uh, I would go and check out that playlist. That's a good one to start with, you know, and I think I think I even have the link to that down in the description below if you wanna read up to that. Doe Creek Forge, thank you for the $2 super chat says likes the year of the anvil stickers and he just wants to get one of those separately he already has one of our um like our other sticker pack i think and let me see here interceptor forge he's asked a couple of times so i wanted to go ahead and get this out there he says roy is there any chance of advice for dressing a claw hammer please it's gordon farmer uh, he wants to use a claw hammer as his forging hammer during this time until he gets a a different one yeah so let, so let me answer that Great question. So if you have a claw hammer, um, it's going to have most likely a rounded, like have a round face on it. Uh, you want to make sure that it doesn't have any waffle pattern on it. So you want to grind that off uh, because you don't want to have texture all over your pieces, or maybe you do. Uh, but for general forging, you don't want that. 
The only other consideration to dress the hammer is you want to alleviate the edges. So that means you want there to be a slight, almost imperceivable crown to the center of the hammer. Um, you don't want a big radius, otherwise you just turned it into a ball peen. You want to be able to lay a straight edge on that, on that uh, hammer face after you've ground it a little bit and it slightly have an arc to it to where that will rock just a little bit and then alleviate the edges just a little bit more and that's just on the edges so you want to keep them nice and round. You don't want to have any sharp round edges. If you have sharp round edges it leaves a bunch of little crescent moons into your work but that's basically it. Um, I would not do anything for the peen of the hammer unless you're wanting to destroy it uh, because it's going to be really hard. I mean, once you have something that's a claw, it's very hard to put the claw back together, right? So I wouldn't do anything with the peen. If you really do need a peen on the hammer, you could maybe, potentially, if you heated it up and you didn't have the hammer handle in it, obviously, if you heated it up and you hammered it together and then just weld on electric weld, arc weld or something on a round bit on the end, like a 3 8 inch round rod on the end. And then you would have like a 3 8 inch uh, radius peen for it. And then maybe, you know, straighten it out, obviously. Uh, but that would be my suggestions there. And then when you can move up to say like a Harbor Freight hammer, um, you know, like a three pound Harbor Freight hammer, don't have mine over here. I still have mine that I started smithing with way back in the day um, and it still works. Um, yeah, it's some Chinesium steel. Don't know much else about it other than that, uh, but it still works even to this day. So. All right, we're getting really close to our welding heat here. We've got time for maybe one more comment, one more quick comment. Uh, let's see, he asked if there is any videos on how to do it. I believe I have a video on dressing a regular forging hammer. It's going to be the same as anybody's videos on dressing a forging hammer. Anybody's video that they got on dressing a forging hammer, usually you're just alleviating the outside edges, the corners, so you don't leave those little sharp dings on the material. Um, and then you want a slight crown to the face, very slight. I mean, almost imperceivable to the naked eye. And uh, that's, that's basically it. Um, so you can take what other people have done for their regular forging hammers and whatnot, and then just apply that essentially. So real quick, I need to explain what I'm doing here in the fire. So, because you guys can't see. I'm getting the material to the left and the right of the weld heated up to a welding heat as well. What that's going to do is that's going to allow more heat to stay in the piece and keep it at a welding heat a lot longer. Then once both sides are heated up, I'm turning the scarf, the actual scarfed area into the hottest direct area of the fire to bring it up to full welding heat. And we're ready to go. In fact, we're a little overheat. Ready, Jess? Go to the anvil. Good? Gotta take another heat on that. Bring it up that extra little bit and go again at it. Back to the main cam? Yeah. Good? Okay. How else are we doing here? All right. I was just trying to scroll through. Uh, I'll come back to it in a little bit. Mountain Critter Creation says, I don't have a way to weld. Okay, then I would do, I would avoid, if it was me, I would avoid doing anything with the peen. I would not worry, I would not worry about the claws at all. I would just use the hammer face as a hammer face. Um, that's, that's, that's what I would go with. Um, there is a point, there is a point in all smithing where you will have to either 
make the tool, buy the tool, or have somebody maybe trade you a tool for some other work or whatever, there will come a point in smithing in anybody's journey that you can only go so far with certain you know, tool sets and then you have to upgrade and then you just have to upgrade and then you just have to upgrade from there. Um, so just to get started, go with what you got, start with what you got. If all you've got is a claw hammer, well then just swing that claw hammer like you would do any other hammer. I wouldn't damage the hammer, I would just dress the face like I previously described and call it a day at that. Um, but be looking out for a economical hammer option for yourself as soon as possible. Oh. All right, we're up to temp. Go to the anvil. So I'm worrying about the flats first. I'm gonna go ahead and brush it once. And then I'm gonna put it back in the fire. I'm gonna heat it up. And then I'm gonna work the end here. It looks super hot, but it's really not. It's, it looks bright yellow, but it's right now it's almost, almost an orange color. It is welded, so that is a good thing, or it is appearing to be welded right now. So that's good. We'll find out once we start shaping it. If it pops loose, then we know we ain't got it welded. And at that point, is Roy going to lose any sleep? Nope. Are we back to the main cam? Okay. This is the next point I like to point out about forge welding. So I did a forge welding class where every single, and I'm the instructor, every single weld on the first try because of me explaining out the steps, because of me taking the extra time to really illustrate what I was doing and not being in my natural envelopment and just a whole host of other things going on, in a class, I wasn't able to get it to weld the first time out the gate. And yeah, you wanna talk about demoralizing. Here I am supposed to be teaching a class on forge welding, uh, uh, teaching a you know, three day weekend forge welding intensive and I don't stick not one weld the first time out the gate, right? Like you're supposed to be the hero as the, the master blacksmith there, right? And like, you know, people are looking up to you and you gotta just be able to weld like crazy and stuff. Um, but it was a good teaching point. It was a really, really good teaching point because then I could walk people through why my welds weren't sticking and we diagnosed the problem together. Oh, I'm not fast enough, we moved the anvil closer. Oh, we didn't have it hot enough, we left it in longer. Oh, it's getting really crusty, maybe there's a clinker at the bottom. Wow, you know, it's sparkling like crazy. There's too much oxygen in the fire. And so that was really super handy. At first, it was demoralizing, um, but in the long run, it worked really good. Right now, this is super hot and it's even starting to burn, so I should shut my mouth and go back to welding. <laughs> Let's go to the horn. Let's go back to the anvil, Jess. Okay. All right, I'll give it a few more quick pops on top, and then I'm gonna dress the ears here. Don't go too much on the ears. Just put them back in place, and then we're gonna re-weld this again. I'm gonna take one more little light heat just to weld in the rings there. So I'll heat it up one more time. I'm just trying to weld up the scarf right now. That's all I'm trying to accomplish. I'm trying to kind of clean up the scarfed edge. That's it. The piece is welded, it's acting, it's feeling and acting like one piece. So that's primo. All we're doing is just dressing up those edges just a bit. Any questions before this is hot enough to weld? Uh, we have a $15 super chat from Rob, don't call me Bob. It says, keep up the good work. Thank you, Rob. Don't call me Bob. I thought I could have something witty to say, but no. No, it didn't happen. <laughs> All right, this is hot. Let's go back to the anvil. So now this is where we're really going to test it. Make sure our weld's sitting there good. We 
ago, developed a little bit of thickness in that welded area so I could take another welding heat and thin it down a bit if I need to, which I probably will. So we can get that down. Well, hopefully you guys can see it. So that's all welded up. Then take out, there's a little bit of bend in this piece. I'm not particularly enjoying. There, I'll have it. Richard uh, Snellenberger has a question. He says, what happens when you forge weld it, then it won't fit back in the coals? Um, I'm not sure I understand the, I understand the question. Um, what happens when you forge weld it and it doesn't fit back in the coals? Um, so usually that is not a problem. If you can fit your piece in there to forge in the first place, it can make it back in there. Um, coal forges, coke forges, they're very handy in the respect. And not all different shapes and sizes and models might have different uh, problems that you have to work around. But in most coal forge situations, uh, you can just build up a larger mound of coke and then put the piece up in there versus down as far, um, things like that. I have not found a situation where once I've got something forge welded on, onto a piece that I couldn't fit it back in the coal forge. Now, gas forge, yes. Once you get so many things and you exceed the opening size of your gas forge, then you're hosed. But with a coal forge, things are fairly open and expansive. So that's not necessarily as big of an issue. We're hot. Just dressing out the thickness here. Just so this way our pot rack's going to sit flush like it should. And by the way, you could get really, uh, you could get really fussy with this, by the way. Get as fussy as you like. Questions? Um, let's see here. Ryan R. Ask if you've ever forged stainless steel. Yes, I have, and I hate the stuff. <laughs> For hand forging, I should say. Regular forging, love it. It's great. But uh, hand forging, not so much. So there you have it. There's a perfectly welded ring, or semi close to perfect, good enough for a trivet. They see that really well, Jess? Oh, yeah. Looks good. Very symmetrical. So I will also throw down here something. We're going to have a little mini Roy rant. Because about this time in videos, forge welding videos, let's go back to main cam. Now that that's done, I'm going to heat this whole ring up. By the way, here we go. Before I do my mini ramp, this is some good technical information that you need to know. When you're forge welding a piece, your grain structure inside your material is getting really expanded. It's getting really coarse. So it is good to thermocycle your welds if you want them to be structural. So you've got to heat the piece up and let it cool naturally. You don't have to thermocycle it like high carbon steel, but you want to at least thermocycle it once. That means bring it up way past magnetic and then let it cool slowly and naturally. Um, by doing that, you break down that larger grain structure. It allows it to settle and get back into a much more, um, a, a nicer um, piece, if you will. You need to do this when you're working with chain, when you're forge welding hammer faces to uh, wrought iron bodies or mild steel bodies. Anytime you do a bladed edge into a softer material, you need to thermal cycle the piece. 
on the ladder there talking about thermocycling a blade edge. Usually you're doing exactly that in the heat treat process while you're doing something for say a pair of scissors or a kniff or something like that. You're already doing that inadvertently. But for other stuff, it may not be like chain. Nobody thermocycle thinks to thermocycle chain, but you need to. Otherwise you can end up having a weld failure on your chain. Um, so just keep that in mind. You, you need to thermocycle a little bit, let it get hot, let it cool back down and call that a day. Um, the weld in my and in my opinion and from the individualized testing that I have done, um, the welds hold up a lot better under stress and strain if you've let it do that. It has less chance of breaking near the weld and or shearing off on the weld plane itself, the welded plane. That's the biggest, scariest part. So keep that in mind. Good comments before I go on to my little rant? They were happy to hear your rant. They said it was about time. <laughs> okay. Well, that wasn't my rant. <laughs> that wasn't my rant yet. But we're going to get into it. All right. So, at this time, I'm going to talk a little bit about scarfs and seeing scarfs in your work as a final result. This one's going to be a doozy. There's always a doozy. There's a certain select group of people out there, and generally these people are probably people who maybe can't weld. I don't know. Maybe they're master forge welders, and uh, I don't know, but they usually have like weird screen names like Armchair Warrior 77 and, you know, Robot Killer 45 and Dragon Slayer, you know. 15 and like all these other weird kind of like gamer names, uh, if you will, weird screen names. And so I don't know if they were meant to be taken seriously with names like Dragon Slayer 67. Um, yeah. Or Uncle Bob and your mom. Like I've seen a lot of weird names <laughs> since being online. Um, but there seems there's always there's always a group of people that come around and say, oh, I can see a scarf. I can see the scarf joint, so that is a bad weld. So that weld is not sound, and so therefore you need to check it out, or you're not no good, or you don't know how to forge weld, or this or that. And I would challenge you to look at a ton, and I do mean a ton, of historical examples where you will see where they've got scarfs, where they've welded stuff together, and you can see the hard edge, either through decay, of the piece itself, whether it's rusted or it's gotten ate away over the years a little bit, but you see edges. Now, whether those edges were apparent when they are finished in a lot of historic ironwork, you will see scarfs. You will see the toes of scarfs. Where you won't see toes of scarfs that have been welded in is when someone has come in with a file and has took the time to remove those scarf, those toes of the scarf from the piece generally speaking. The second time that you won't see it is when you have a lot of transformative welding going on. So for instance, I showed in that class that I taught on forge welding that when you upset a bar, you get a lot of mass into it, and we were hooking one bar straight onto another with a basic lap weld, and then we were blending it out to where you couldn't see the weld anymore. We needed a lot of extra mass in it before our scarfs. And when I was done, you could not see at all where the scarf was. But it went through a lot of manipulation of that scarf joint. And that is simply not possible in all sorts of projects. And I'll show you that on this piece here, this ring. It is not possible, you go to the anvil, Jess. It is not possible on a ring like this with the dimensions and characteristics that this thing is to get a perfectly blended seamless joint and be able to upset the material. Again, we started with quarter inch thick material, three quarter wide. Yes, you could spend a lot of time upsetting this piece, but it's going to thin out anyhow. 
it's going to end up, it's going to thin down and you're going to lose it. You're going to end up getting, by trying to blend out your scarfs perfectly, your toes of your scarfs, you're going to get a lot of thinning just beyond the weld because you have a thick piece here and this is getting up to welding. This is getting up to welding heat as well. This is losing mass on each side of this much larger mass here as you're going. So think of it every time you stick this back in the fire, you're losing mass to this piece. It's small, it's a small amount given, but it is a good amount in the long run. And you can see a visible waste in some welds where you, know, you may not see a scarf, but you see a big divot where they've lost a lot of material by trying to blend in the weld. So don't get caught in that trap when you are trying to do forge welding that you must blend out your scarf where you can't see it at all because it's not necessarily possible in every single piece. I've got a little bit of a toe here that I can see, and when I file this clean, you won't see it anymore. And I've got a toe here that's more prominent because that was the anvil side, so that toe got more chilled off, and when I file it, you will no longer see that anymore. I've left it a little thick in this dimension, so that way I could file that out. But don't let that be a hindrance to you of saying, oh, I got to keep rewelding this because you push it too far. You try to get this line to disappear, you're not going to. You're not going to get that toe to disappear if it didn't disappear in the first place as soon as you stuck the pieces together. You, all you're going to do is keep stretching this toe out over this other piece and it's just going to get really thin on this and you're going to thin out your piece. So when you have larger stock that is scarfed, that you're trying to put together, and I mean larger stock. That's like, you know, large bar stock, or say, say you're taking some half inch rod and you're upsetting it to say five eighths round diameter and then you're putting a scarf on it and then you're gonna scarf it together and you weld it like for tong reins and then you just really dress it and just keep hammering it out until, until all noticeable scarfs are gone. You can do it in that result but on certain projects like this, you are going to see a weld. You, you will end up seeing a weld line. So for all the critics out there that tell somebody, oh, I can see your scarf, your weld ain't no good, uh, just let them keep talking like that um, and go on about your day thinking things, thinking happy thoughts. That's it for my rant. Congratulations. <laughs> you had to sit through an hour rant. Well, you got a tip while you were at it oh. <laughs> from a Rick, a Rick Kirby. $5 super chat, who says Roy Rance, setting the story straight for over a decade. And also I want to mention the previous super chat from Hans at Charming Hollow Forge. Thank you for the $20 super chat. You said it was towards the shipping of the giveaways. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Amy. And thank you. Um, the most recent one. Oh, I just jumped down. Rick Kirby. Rick Kirby, that's right. I didn't want to say the I didn't want to say the last name wrong, so. Rick Curry, thank you. Thank you, Hans. Thank you, Amy, again, uh, for being here. Thank you all for supporting Super Chats and the tip. And uh, yeah, Roy Rants, setting the world straight for over a decade. <laughs> well, you know, I haven't been where I was at to where I could do any sort of Roy Rants um, a decade ago. So <laughs> I was just pleasantly sitting by and like, oh, somebody teach me something. You know, I was definitely hat in hand and alms for the poor, kind of one of those sort of deals. And I'm still that way, I'm still that way. I'll learn from anybody. Uh, so if you have some contradicting information or facts and factoids that you'd like to point out there to me, uh, feel free, drop them in the comment section. If we don't get to them, I do watch some of our streams on the replay uh, just to kind of see what the chat was like. And then, um, yeah, by all means, let the world know your voice on it. Let the world know your voice on it. So, <coughs> where are we at, Jessica, on time? Sure. We are sitting at about uh, 6.15, and also we have 147 viewers, so right around the 150 bubble. I wouldn't be surprised if we had hit that recently, or we will hit that soon. And also, uh, we had an additional $2, sorry, additional two Super Chats come in. One of them was Evan Ladd for $2. And the second one was Stress Master, who just scrolled away from me. Stress Master for $5 says shipping help. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you for the shipping help. We appreciate it. God bless you. 
Speaking of shipping, let's give some more items away. All right, so these are going to be just two identical slitting chisels. We're going to give them away to two separate people. We're going to do that. Now, these are shorter chisels. Um, I kind of made the mistake. I was working with what little stuff. I was working with some scrap stock that I had on hand. Um, I should have went for a bigger bar. I was just wanting to get as many people some chisels as I can. So this is for smaller work. You definitely don't want to be using this on a big one inch square <laughs> bar. You're going to roast your fingers alive. So uh, don't do that. It's, it's for more smaller work, if you will. These are about four inches long. Um, again, we'll ship them anywhere in the world. And uh, again, just thank you for everybody who's helping out with the shipping and things of that nature. Okay, let's give away the first chisel. You guys know how it goes. Go ahead and comment now. All right, the first one is going to Dan Boyles, who says, me please. Hey, congratulations, Dan. You are the lucky winner, sir. Contact, 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 contact. <laughs> description, description, contact. <laughs> Love you. Thank you. <laughs> so there's one. Hold up. What happened to those other ones I said over here? I just gave away one slitting chisel. Yes, yeah, so far I have down uh, Johnny Sykes and Dan Boyles for slitting chisels and a square punch to Will Batic. Batrick. Okay. Sure. Woo. I was like, wait a minute, where'd they go? They disappeared in the snow. The flux. <laughs> All right, we're going to give away another one here. The suspense is killing everyone. All right, this one is going to Mandy Brandt, who says, I. I. Well, I, I, Captain. You won, Mandy Brandt. Congratulations. Thank you for being here. Get with us, and we'll get this shipped out to you. Let's go ahead and give away two more sticker packs, yes? While we're at it. And then I also have, these aren't heat treated yet, but I'll go ahead and give them away too at some point, but we'll wait till just a little bit later, probably towards the end of the stream. We'll give away another square and slitting chisel. Okay, but, but let's go ahead and give away two sticker packs. Again, two sticker bundles. Where'd the little one go? There it is. All right. As you see, there's quite a bit in these sticker packs. You get quite a few stickers, you know, so you can represent <laughs> and the year of the anvil sticker. So again, let's go ahead and give a couple of these away. Start commenting now if you want some stickers. Who we got? All right, this one is going to Paul Fontanini, who says, me please. Hey, Paul. Glad to have you, sir. Glad that you won. Congratulations. You know the drill? Contact us. And let's give away one more. Right. Better comment, people. Better comment. All right. This next one is going to Neil Graham, who says, stickers. Neil Graham, congratulations, sir. Stickers. All yours. Um, well, almost all yours. <laughs> All right. Also, I wanted to thank you guys for the two super chats that came in. Uh, Island Metal Forge, $5 to fill that flux container and followed up by Doe Creek Forge, $2 on asking any advice on teaching a class. Great one. Yamez, thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. Uh, appreciate you. If you don't know Yamez, you should. I'm assuming a lot of you do. Uh, you can just click on his little name badge doot, and go over to his channel and subscribe. He puts on a great little show. Uh, I believe his day is Saturdays at 6 is when he goes live. So definitely go check him out. Uh, Yamez is a great guy and uh, yeah, has a pretty good time. He gets into all sorts of interesting stuff. So yeah, go check out Yamez. Thank you for that. And then Doe Creek Forge, right? Again, thank you gentlemen both for the Super Chats. Advice on teaching. Yes? Yep. Okay. Advice on teaching. One of the hardest things that I had to overcome when I started instructing or doing instructing is this fear that people know more than me. I know that sounds bad, doesn't it? 
<laughs> um, so let me explain what that is. When you teach a class, you have got to assume, unless you're let known otherwise, that everyone in the class is there to learn something from you because you know more than them inherently. It's why you are teaching the class. Now, I've taught classes where guys have been forging for way longer than I have. I've taught classes to guys who have been in the smithing industry or around it, but have never smithed a day in their life. They've, you know, they were the office clerk in some foundry someplace, right? Um, and so you hear this, oh, I'm CEO or head so-and-so of forging enterprises, yada, yada, yada. And you're like, oh, wow, well, you must really know something. No, they're there learning from you because they don't. So again, so that's one of the hard things to come over because part of teaching is having enough confidence. Now, that's not arrogance. You don't want to treat people like they're beneath you. You're not trying to belittle people. You're trying to raise people up. So think of it as an expression of you sharing what other people have show, shared with you to that person that you're teaching. And sometimes that's well received, sometimes it's not. Um, and you really, can't let, you really can't let that bother you. There, you'll have students that'll come to class that will really surprise you. They'll just like, Man, they'll well, it's not out of steel, and it'll, it'll look perfect. Everything will be beautiful at the end of it, and they're like your teacher's pet, right? And then you'll have other people that seems like they can't ever get it figured out, like, which way to hold the hammer, right? Like, they're over there whacking it with the hammer handle, you know, and they, they don't know which way. You'll have people like that that are excited about trying the craft of blacksmithing as well. And so when you assume, naturally assume, that everyone's on the same playing field, you can better take care of everyone's needs that come take a class from you. Um, that, takes a little bit, that takes a little bit of time to get used to that, but that could be probably one of my biggest pieces of advice. If someone's wanting to come take a class from you, it's because they need to have some sort of information or they find some value in what you have got to say. Um, so just say it with some confidence and then yeah, lead on. So I hope, I hope that will help you. I don't know if that's the type of information that you were after from me, um, but that's kind of one of those best advice things that you do. I know it's not like, oh, you should hold your hammer a certain way or you should hold, hold your tongue outside your mouth slightly tilted to the left, right? Like uh, there's, there's not like a technique in teaching I could teach you. You're either a good instructor or demonstrator or teacher and you build up those skills or you don't. you don't. It doesn't come, some, for some people, it's kind of natural, but not really. It's something that you have to work on, you have to build up on, and a lot of it's confidence. So, now confidence can get you in trouble. Oh, I've been in trouble. Oh, I've been in trouble. Have I not been in trouble? I have been in trouble. <laughs> but uh, when, when I say trouble, I say, I'm saying it very lightheartedly. Um, the kind of trouble that I'll get in is sometimes my confidence is mistaken for arrogance and it's really not. There's not, there's a very small arrogant bone in my body. <laughs> it's a very small bone. Um, I do my best to, sorry I have to walk off camera here, find me a pair of box jaw tongs. I do my best and my absolute best to treat everyone with respect, lots of respect. As human beings, as people, things of that nature in my class, no matter what background they come from, I don't judge people on appearances, I don't judge people on the way they choose to live their lives, I don't judge, I just don't judge people, that's, that's kind of the goal there, right? I try to love everybody that I come in contact with, and some of them are chuckleheads and they hate me right out the gate and uh, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> I, can, I can just as easily be your worst enemy as I can be your friend. So, um, but th I know that about myself and so I don't get too, uh, too heartbroken one way or the other. But that's where, again, confidence can get you in trouble because you say, all right, do it this way or no, hold the hammer this way or do it this way because this is the proper way of doing it. And they were under the guise or maybe they learned from another smith that told them that that was all wrong. Like you don't hold a hammer like that or you don't forge something like that ever. 
because they were speaking from their own experience. And uh, sometimes that can lead you down some paths where people may not like you as much, but that's okay. There's 7.8 billion people on this planet. Bound to find somebody who don't like you. That was like a mini Roy rant and advice all wrapped up in one. I should shut up now and get back to Smithin', huh? Yeah. Well, yes, more to suggest and more to <laughs> Okay. Let's go. Let's hit those real quick before we. All right. Um, one was from Hans at Charming Hollow Forge for $24. He says, bringing the double-handled Bertha to quad state. Hope you're there to team strike with me, Jessica. LOL. No, I mean Roy. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I'll give it a go with you, Hans, at Quad State. I'll give it a go with you. I've never used a double handle sledge. I'll do it for the experience, but don't expect me to do it for very long because I'm a lazy, high price barad. So, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate it, brother. Oh, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Also, if you guys don't know Charming Hollow Forge, he is a regular supporter here at Christ Center Ironworks, and you should know him as well. Um, he just recently completed, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Hans, and you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, a 26-pound double-handled double handled sledge hammer. Yeah, I think I said all that right. Yep, but uh, that's a mouthful, yeah. But yeah, so go check him out. Again, all you got to do is punch him in the face there in the comment section. That's what I like to call it. You know, you just tap on their little icon and it can say, hey, go to their channel. And then you can, you know, go over to their channel and check them out. Definitely do that. Also, all right. Also, um, this is the first time, uh, Michael, Black Collar Ironworks, we have not seen you like this year at all. You know, I was a little concerned. Um, <laughs> I actually sent you an email. I sent you an email last month and I'm like, you know, hey, just checking in. We haven't seen you in a while. And uh, <laughs> I didn't. I don't think I got a response, so I was a little concerned. But he says, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, no, no. This is what he says. Um, he says, perfect timing. Insert borax joke here. Oh my goodness! I've been gone for a while, and Roy must be forge welding. Look at all that borax on the ground. And a Roy rant too. Heart bro. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. Borax for everyone. <laughs> borax. <laughs> That's the only way to weld. <laughs> Yamez is going to get another screen grab. Here you go, Yamez. Borax for everyone. <laughs> Borax. <laughs> the only way to weld. <laughs> yeah, it is. By the way, did anybody notice I didn't put any Borax on that ring when I welded it? Just, just saying. Ah. Black collar, black collar Ironworks, yes? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Yes, it's been a long time, and it's good to see your face in this stream. Well, I can't see your face, but you know what I mean. Good to see you here. Also, oh, sorry, I got one more for you. Uh, Mr. Coffee, thank you for the $10 super chat. He says, quit sneezing into the borax. There's white stuff all over the place. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Coffee. You're awesome, sir. I look forward to seeing you again at Quad State real soon. It's coming up a while from now, but it's coming up. I look forward to it. All right. So um, I don't know what time we're looking at, but I'm going to start the central element. So the central element that I will be putting in the center of our ring here. Probably can't talk too much longer on this um, before I get the work done. The yeah, I'm starting to burn this up. Let's, uh, I'll just set it there. It'll be all right. Whew. I am all over the place tonight. Excuse me. Trying to chat and keep up with that. So the central element that we're going to be putting in the center of our ring is going to be a flower. I'm going to do a very simple flower motif in the center of the ring and then it will be riveted on separate. And then also, and I may forge weld it. I may decide to actually forge weld the piece on, but first and foremost, we have to make the element that we're going to do. So I'm going to go through the process of kind of just laying that out to start with. And then depending on where we're at in time, we may have to finish it up next live stream when we give away the 66 pound anvil. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get this over to the anvil cam, Jess, while we're here and everything. Get this 
grabbed here. So I'm going to start on the far side of the anvil. I'm just going to get just a tiny bit more heat into it. Okay. I'm going to start on the far side of the anvil and I'm going to knock off the corners first and foremost. If I can hit them. Sometimes longer pieces like this held in tongs aren't so nice to work with. So I'm just rounding that off. And then I'm going to set over roughly a cube of material or just a little bit more, about a cube and a quarter of material. I'm going to set down a shoulder. I'm going to try to walk up to that. There, it's got that centered up. So this is going to start our flower element. I'm going to get another heat on that. It was getting a little cold when I was doing that, but we'll get one more, we'll get another heat on this. Meanwhile, we'll take another chat while that heats up. A commenter named Nobody, uh, thank you for the $10 super chat, and he asked, or she, uh, do you have any advice for threading? For threading? Um, yeah, if you're, if you're talking about threading, cutting and threading pipe, um, I don't know as far as, as far as advice, well, I think it's probably for a bolt or something. Um, if you're cutting threading pipe, go to where there's three threads sticking out the end of your die. If you're, if you're doing threading on a bolt, um, you know, cutting threads on a bolt, pretty self-explanatory. You want to make sure that the start is the most crucial. The starting of the die is the most crucial part. If you get it slightly off, it will rectify itself, but it will also kind of jack up with the die and you'll have a really rough time getting it around. So you want to make sure that it's almost perfectly uh, squared up. If you're tapping something into a hole, and this is probably not answering the question at all, but if you're tapping something in the hole, I like to start taps in a hole by locking them in the chuck of my drill press so this way I can ensure that they are coming in perfectly square and symmetrical with the hole, and then after that I go to hand threading them in. So let's go over to the anvil, and uh, hopefully that answered that question good enough. All right. I want to focus right up near the, what's going to become the flower without going too far elsewise. So hopefully you guys can see that we're starting to create this little bit of a foot pad here. We're going to try to round this up a little bit. It's going to take a couple heats to do this. We'll go ahead and just straighten this up a little bit, get some planishing heat. I don't really need to do this too much because like I said, we're going to just take another heat on this and it's going to change all the dimensions, but I like to clean up my work from time to time just so I can see how I'm progressing. But that there, that area there is going to become the actual flower blossom itself. So we're going to go ahead and work on refining that up just a little more round. You don't have to go too crazy, but we want it to be a little more round. We have a comment here from Endershot250 who says, Hey man, I know this is off topic, but you are a big inspiration for me. I started blacksmithing around three months ago and you have really helped me out a lot. Awesome. Awesome. So glad to hear that. Not off topic at all. Bloating Roy's ego up even bigger than what it already is. That's not off topic. Let's do that more. <laughs> oh. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that I have inspired you in some small way uh, to stay at it and keep ha happy hammering, my friend. I appreciate that. We ready to go back over the anvil?
go for it. And also nobody, uh, he sent a $5 super chat and said thank you. Very welcome, nobody. You are awesome. You are our somebody. <laughs> How about that? Now, I'm not going to invest a crazy amount of time on making this perfectly round because, well, it's going to be a flower blossom, so it doesn't need to be perfectly round. It's going to be transformative. Pull that back in order, just like so. All right. Go ahead and get a brush here. Brush it a little bit to just get it a little extra clean. So you can see where we're at so far. So this is the progress on this piece so far. Hopefully you can see that well enough. So that's what we've got going on there. This will be turned into a rosette on the end, but we're not going to waste time doing that just yet. We actually need to make the um, leaflets or the part of the stem, like the grassy portion of the stem, the leaves. So we will work on that portion now. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take and split that out of this piece from one side. From one side here, we're going to come in with a slitting chisel and we're going to chisel down in roughly a straight line. If you can just picture trying to keep this thickness here down through the piece. That's how we're going to chisel out, if that makes sense. Good? Yep. Okay. Is there any All right, I will look and I will look and see if there's anything specific to that. Uh, Dan Diller, thank you for the dollar ninety nine super chat. He says um, forty nine ninety nine. Thanks. <laughs> so I don't know. Today, it looks like YouTube's a little weird. Like some of the numbers that shows up in, this, in the bar is different from what shows up at the top. So I don't know if YouTube's a little weird today or something, but, but anyway. <laughs> and Black Collar Ironworks, thank you for the $5 super chat. He says, sorry, Jess, I didn't reply to you, frowny face, or well, sad face, but I got my reply to you halfway done through. It took me 10 minutes to type out the first super chat. <laughs> That's all right. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And uh, Taco Stacks ask about the weight of your anvil. Okay. The weight of Olga, as she's affectionately called, is 465 pounds. It's a North German Pettinghaus anvil. It is an all forged anvil. It is a forged anvil with a welded steel top to it. So, um, yeah, it's actually forged in multiple pieces being this big. Um, I think at one time I counted, if I'm not wrong, I counted seven individual welds on this anvil to get it all together. So uh, quite an impressive feat of welding and craftsmanship and engineering uh, for sure. All right, anything else? We got time for one more? Sure, uh, also nobody with a $5 super chat says, super chat, the name references to the Iliad. It's been a long time since I've read that. Ah, cool. Thank you for the $5 super chat. We appreciate you. Thank you everyone for your super chats. We do appreciate it. God bless each and every last one of you. Thank you so much. So, we are ready, we are hot. Are we good? All right, let's go to the anvil. So starting right off, it is my suggestion for you, if you are not careful with your hammer blows and strikes and all of that good stuff, um, or you're not confident with them anyhow, that you go ahead and take time to put down a cutoff plate. I'm not gonna take that time because I'm not gonna cut all the way down to the anvil. All right, 
So hopefully you guys can see how I start splitting that off there. Cool? Yeah. So if you noticed, I've tried to keep this as parallel as I can. There's a little bit of a bump here, but we'll dress that out with a little bit of forging um, when we round this stem up. So, so that'll go away. That's not a problem. We just want to kind of peel this out uh, away from it. I will also throw down just a scrap plate or I'll go over to my block in the background and finish cutting down, sever down through the piece um, itself. But you don't want to hammer and drive your chisel all the way into your anvil face. It'll damage it. So we'll go ahead and get that good and hot. There's a little bit of a side chat going on about uh, anvil weight. Uh -huh. Hans says, mine's only 292 and I have anvil envy. <laughs> but he says, but mine's older and rarer, LOL. Still beautiful. You know, it doesn't, uh, good, good thing about chats about anvils. It really doesn't matter about, you know, necessarily your size of your anvil. Um, how great it is, how pretty it is, what brand, whatever, you know, that the important thing out there is, are you smithing and are you having fun? Are you enjoying it? Of course, there's always going to be more premium or quality tools out there. Of course, there's always going to be the next latest and greatest Ferrari of anvils out there. Um, but the main takeaway, if you're getting into this craft, are, are you having fun? Are you making items? Is it suiting your purpose? Is the tool doing the work that you need it to do? Um, and this anvil was a lifelong dream of mine and I'm super thankful um, to have it. So, uh, but I certainly started off, I actually started off my smithing endeavors on a 55 pound Harbor Freight anvil like many of you out there have done. And, uh, and I used it for four years, solid, when I first got started. So it can certainly do. It may not be the thing you want to stay with for the rest of your life. It's not the um, beat all anvil, I guess you would say, but it's still valuable. All right, this is good and hot. Let's go back to the chisel here. Set that down there. Loud enough for you? So it happens when you have snow and whatnot. Stuck on a plate and you lay a whopping piece of hot steel on there. So if you guys can see how that leaf's gonna look. And since we chisel cut it, there's really not a lot of forging we've got to do on this. We'll file it a little bit to take out the super sharpness of it, but because we chisel cut it, it's got a nice facet on the inside that's going to reflect light really nicely. When it's laying down in a flat position, you'll be able to see it. But we need to give ourselves a courtesy bend so we can dress out the roundness here in the stem. You guys are kind of getting coupled demonstrations in one, really, because what we're doing here is not only are we making an ornamental little leaf thing, but we made a forge welded ring. So those could technically be two separate projects for you, um, depending on what level you're at of smithing. Thank you, Black Collar Ironworks for the $5 Super Chat. He says, oh Roy, is that a new chip out of Olga? See, wink. <laughs> Where? Where? Never. <laughs> That's awesome. Nope, no new chips. No new chips out of Olga. So, all right, now that we've got a little thin piece, oh, sorry, you're talking. Okay, now that we've got a little thin piece on here, we need to watch that we're not burning that up in the fire while we get this other piece up to heat. So, uh, be real careful with it. Let's go back to the anvil, Jess. All right. 
hammer that over a bit more. I'm going to hammer the leaf out of the way a bit more. And now we can go ahead and start rounding off the corners of this piece. You can leave it stimmy or you can go ahead and completely round it up. The choice is yours. You can round it up perfectly smooth or leave it like a stem. Really is whatever a stack you're trying to go for. I'm trying to leave a little bit of texture in it, so I'm not going to go perfectly round with the piece. I might leave a little bit of texture in it. But there we go. We're getting that going. Looking good. Straighten that out a little bit. And then I'll probably round that up just a bit more. I think I would like to see it just a little smoother texture. So we'll get one more heat on that. Daniel Crawford asks, uh, Roy, would you consider rewalding an anvil that fractures at the waist? Um, as far as reforge welding is concerned, if we're if we're even talking that, um, again, uh, I would most likely what I would do in that situation is I would end up arc welding it and getting it back together. Um, by the time, by the time you get a piece of anvil like that super hot, you get the waste re-welded in, you're probably ending up with a totally different anvil than what you started with. And if there's any other problems in the anvil, they're gonna present themselves as you try to fit, take and forge weld an anvil that's already fatigued in that way. Um, so I personally would probably given the job or the task, unless it's just a fun exercise to see if you can do it, in which case, have that. Sure, why not? Let's weld one. You know, <laughs> let's get it together. Um, but if I was given the job or the task to make a repair that way that's fractured at the waistline, I would probably just weld it. I'd get it through welded. Put it on a one inch by one inch bar and then fill like in the center, let it balance and start welding and just keep working out until you get the whole thing built back out with weld. That would be my suggestion. Let's go back to the anvil, Jess. Get this all perfectly rounded up. It's not gonna be perfect. Really, I need to actually come over to the flat face of the anvil and clean this up. If you don't have a horn on your anvil that has a nice square horn like I do on Olga here, which I would use except that you guys won't be able to see. If I go way back here, you guys are not going to be able to see anything. You can smooth things right up and get in between those two places. Barring all that, if you don't have that, you can also put in a radius block in the anvil and use that. Again. Use whatever's handy to you. Beautiful. So there we have it. There's that. Now we're ready to do a little bit of shaping and then we'll make our bloom on the end here. Any questions, Jess? Let's see, we do have a $50 super chat from Dan Deller. He said, figured it out, thanks. Okay, I see you were trying to, um, that makes sense now. <laughs> you are trying to type in what you wanted it to do, but yeah, you have to select probably like a drop down menu. But thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, Dan, for that. You are awesome. Everyone who's super chat tonight's awesome. Every one of our contributors, you guys are all awesome. Everyone who's shared our streams around, um, also awesome. Everyone who watches our videos, again, awesome. Thank you. We would not be here without you.
our audience. We really wouldn't. Okay. One more. You got uh, Yama's Island Metal Forge. He says, Roy, uh, um, by the way, thank you for the $5 super chat, Yamas. He says, Roy, if we ever get to it, are we going to try and weld our secret project, LOL? Yes, we will. I've got a bigger place, a bigger facility, and we can make that happen. So um, it's going to be a little bit, not going to lie. I don't know if it'll be this year, but it might be a good way, to it might be a good way in 2021 to play around with that. So um, I'm full of big ideals. Uh, ideas getting better I'm not really I'm horrible um, I've, I've got a ton of I ideas on that um, and our secret project yes that's something that I want to do just for major cool kudo points uh, but I got to get some other things set up here in the shop first before we do that but yes definitely thank you for the five dollar super chat Jess this is hot let's go ahead and do this real quick okay and then we'll continue. All right, so I'm going to follow the sweep of our little leaflet here. I'm going to follow the same directional curve or sweep with that. So I'm gonna hammer this back, okay? And now you could do whatever you like. It kind of had created a nice curve all in of itself. So you could do that. I could have left that in at that stage. But I want this to kind of fall around because remember, this has got to go inside of our circle, inside of our ring. So it might have been looking long at first, but remember, curves eat up a lot of material. So if you make it too short, then it's going to be too short. So let me grab this ring and we'll kind of take a look how these are progressing. This is just a good point to look at this. So if you can see, it doesn't quite fit in the ring, does it? It doesn't quite fit in the ring yet. So that means I need to come in a little bit more and I need to do a little bit more to it to make it fit in the ring. See what I'm saying? Can they see that good? Yeah. So I gotta take and bring that in a little more curved. So we'll just take a little light heat on that. We'll take more questions, Jess, while I get a little light heat on that. And I'm, I'm gonna crank this down. I haven't cranked it down since we did the forge weld, but it's been running at like forge weld speed since <coughs> that was really, well, just dumb on my part, so. All right, uh, Charming Hollow Forge asked if he missed the anvil giveaway. Um, we are giving away one anvil a month, and this month it's going to be our next live stream, which the link is down in the description below for our next live stream. So if you want to go and you can set a notification, but just in case YouTube doesn't notify you, set, you know, mark it on your calendar or something. So that is down in the description below. That will take place two weeks from today. So that's down there. And also, Metal Man, thank you for the $10 super chat. Just, just wanted to let you know I've been listening while working. Thank you so much. Awesome, Metal Man. Thank you. Um, yeah, and Hans, yeah, you were in our last live stream where we had said we might be giving it away this time around. So just to give us clarity. We were running, we were running super late. We didn't have our promotional materials together, and yeah, today was a bit of a mess. Um, I was a bit of a hot mess, or just a mess, just a mess, not hot, just a mess today. So um, I apologize for that, but we will get our act together and have it ready in the next live stream so but uh yeah but that's what happened with that there you have it there you have it thank you for the ten dollar super chat metal man and glad you're listening in on the earphones like i do to so many of you fellow creators out there all right we're hot let's go and bend this all right so now i'm going to go ahead and start focusing right on the bloom itself trying to get it curved nice and tight in that area and bring it down. It's kind of a little sad flower. Such a little sad flower. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can't, you can't do something that's plant-like <laughs> and not have a Bob Ross reference. <laughs> Such a happy little tree. We'll put a little happy tree. 
I'll put a sad little flower. <laughs> a sad little flower right there. <laughs> oh, all right, sorry. Maybe I'm the only one who finds that funny. But I've got a weird sense of humor. All right, so there we go. That's looking a lot better. I think I can live with that. What do you all think? That looks like that follows the curve a lot better. It looks nicer. I'm gonna go with that. I think that looks pretty good. What's everyone think? Yeah. They look good, they hate it, they love it, they want it. They say, no more, Roy. Enough of your heathenness. Daniel Crawford says, long live Bob Ross. Yes. I might tweak that just a bit more, but. Mm. This is one of those where you might be better leaving well enough alone, but I think it needs just a little more tweaking. So I'm gonna heat it just a little bit more and we'll go there. What we got, Jess? Anything else? Um, yes, everyone's saying good night, Hans. Have a good evening. Good night, Hans. And uh, thanks for stopping by this evening. And yes, they said it looks good. Stress, uh, Stress Master said it's looking good. Feel, feel very blessed. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Hans, for being here. Thank you, everyone. I hope I'm not wearing out the word thank you. It's just, it really is, it really is the way that I feel about everyone that comes to our streams. I am super thankful for every single person that does show up. Um, you know, some people treat it as like you're, like they're doing you a favor and you know, and I can see where that attitude can come in sometimes because, you know, there's a lot to set this up. We started this thing four and a half hours ago, four and a half, almost five hours ago that we started this process. Um, just working on the sign, that didn't work out, you know, but getting all the lights set up and, you know, everything done. Um, you know, that started five hours ago. And so sometimes you can think like, well, people ought to, appreciate me because I'm doing all this and re re really you wouldn't be doing all that unless there was somebody there to watch and to give you some sort of time and their attention because ultimately you're eating up some small part of your next hundred years here on this planet with watching us and we appreciate it I really do I want everybody uh, I want everybody to know that and I want that to be felt and uh, heard by all so so if you're in this stream, thank you. If you support these streams, thank you. If you share these streams, thank you. You are appreciated. Let's go back to the anvil. All right, I'm gonna tap on the top of my tongs because I wanna get that flower portion, that leaflet to curl a little bit more. And then I want to curl this section in just a little bit more. I think that's going to meet my expectations better for what I'm trying to accomplish in this piece. Let me grab my tongs, piece. We're always going to check it. Yeah, that's going to, yeah, that's, that looks better to me. I like, I like where that one's going. I think that's much more centric. I think it has better play on negative space. Um, and then, you know, you might like, ooh, that looks ugly. Again, it's going to look better. You know, it's going to look better once it's done um, because it's not going to be laying on top like that, you know. So just keep that in mind. It won't be laying on top. I still haven't decided whether I want to forge weld it on or not yet um, just as a, a, a subject of show, but I probably won't. I'll probably just attach it with a rivet and call it a day at that. I think that, I think that would be the proper way. Well, the pot's going to sit on here. This is just for show. So it's not meant to even be up in this space. The pot's not meant to bear across it. I'll get there when I get to assembling it. Yeah, it's going to be a flush rivet, basically. No, no one's going to come back and watch us, Jess. They're only going to be here for the anvils next time. And as soon as we give it away, everybody's like, I don't care about that pot trivet anymore. <laughs> They're like, instantly, zero people in the stream. 
All right, now we need to turn that thing into an actual flower. So while I do that, I'm gonna let Jessica talk about, she has something that she put together to take and show off an ebook she finished writing about stunning digital photography for the blacksmith. And that's not the title. She has the title. She's looking at it on the computer. Hopefully the whole thing don't crash. I'm gonna go grab the pieces I need and I'll be right back. And um, by the way, Roy, we just did hit seven o'clock. I wasn't sure if he was gonna remember that because I was like, okay, we're getting close to seven o'clock. He probably forgot, so. Um, but yeah, you, we still got 127 viewers hanging around. So we will go ahead and go over that now. Let me switch to that now. Um, and so I mentioned this, our last live stream, and uh, it's been in the progress for a couple of months now. I've worked on this ebook since November, and it is titled Everyday Photography for Blacksmiths. And so I wrote this um, specifically for blacksmiths. It has tons of pictures of ironwork in it, and it tells you how to take excellent photographs. Uh, the first half of the book is um, the skills, it's just improving your skills kind of on the layout of taking photographs, not necessarily the equipment that you have on hand. So no matter whether you're taking pictures with a cell phone or if you're taking pictures, you know, with a point and shoot or a digital SLR, you know, you can start taking better photographs today. And so I guide you through those steps on how to do that. The ebook is uh, 45 pages in total and uh, it covers all kinds of topics. Uh, there's lots of illustrations, so if you're not real big on reading, you know, there's still a lot of uh, interesting photographs that really illustrate the points that I'm making here um, on everything from uh, the backgrounds you use and props, you know, getting, setting up a using, shot using props. Uh, I go over, you know, different types of cameras, and I also have a couple of recommended cameras that we've used before if you don't really know where to start um, with what type of camera. And then towards the end of the book, I also go into camera settings, like the one you see right there on the screen. That one is on white balance, and uh, each of those photos shows you a different setting. So you can really, it really helps you grasp um, what each setting does. And then also I have a chapter on uses for your photos, and I show you some of the ways that we've used our photos in that particular chapter. And again, there's, tons of photographs in it. Uh, I, I really think you'll enjoy it. Um, the people that I had do the proofreading for me, they had a lot of compliments on it and they enjoyed how it was put together. So if you wanna end up getting this ebook, all you have to do is go to our website, blacksmithpdfs.com. This is what the page looks like. And then we have a little uh, section there called eBooks. If you tap on that, that shows you all the eBooks that we've published to this point and uh, you can buy it either individually, and it's $10, or you can also get uh, the bundle of eBooks, which is six eBooks in total. I know it only shows five there. I need to adjust the photo, but there's six eBooks in total for $25, and uh, that can help you take you know, better photographs and improve your photography if you are, you know, if you have any type of online presence with where you're trying to sell your work or you have social media, stuff like that. And so um, I think that, that summarizes it pretty well. So make sure um, to check that out, you know, after the stream or whatever, if you're interested. And I do have a link down in the description as well. Gold? Good. Welcome back. Hopefully that was a good. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. What'd you think? Is that too bad? Is that too scammy? Too scummy? Um, Tom Carmel. Tom Carlson, he asked, is the ebook PDF or does it go Kindle or ebooks on iPad? Uh, in the past, I have done some of my ebooks on Kindle. Um, this one isn't done that way yet. It requires a different type of formatting. So I will uh, think about doing that and I'd have to revisit my, my notes on how to do that. But I'll give that some thought and I'll let you know um, when it does. What else we got? Everybody happy? Okay, so it's 7 p.m. I'm not gonna leave you on a cliffhanger. I'm not, I can't do that to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do, the I'm gonna do the rosette portion and then we will pick this project back up um, next week. Well, not next week, the following week. 
when we go live again. So when we do the Anvil giveaway, which is the, the dates for that are in the description, correct? The link for it. So you guys can go set the reminder. When we do that, um, we will pick this up again. Like I said, this is gonna be like a three or four live stream project because I'll do a little bit of the finished work um, in between doing my other work that I've got to do in the shop there. Um, I will do some of the, the in-between stages, I guess you would say, and then I'll catch you all up and then we will work on this project, and get this together. So whether it's two, three or four live streams, that's gonna be kind of like our main focus, just so you know, if you're wanting to follow along. I figure that could be a good way of doing a project. Um, I know people like to see like a one and done project and spend 37 seconds and on their way they go, uh, but larger, like projects like this, they're just not conducive to getting done in, you know, 10 minutes time or just two hours. And I can, but it's gonna look real rough. It's just gonna be, it'll work, it'll function, but it might not be as pretty as I would like it to be. So anyways, let's go over the anvil and we will do this next step. So in the next step here, I'm going to use a round ball punch on my tong here. This is a pair of short tooling here. Pretty simple. I'm gonna go right over here to the anvil. And I'm gonna start down at the stem itself. And that's where I'm gonna start hammering out. And I'm gonna go to the other side of the stem. And that's gonna kinda of define where our flower begins and ends. Then I'm gonna come up one, not quite an overlap. And I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna do it again over here on the other side directly. So I bent that a little bit too far so you guys can see how that's progressing. I bent this a little bit too far because now it's end up running into here. So I will need to get this hot and bend that out, straighten it out a little bit so I can finish doing my, my flower. And to everybody who has to head out this evening, um, Wayne at GWI Railroad, thanks for stopping in. I, you said your internet's cutting out in and out a little bit. Uh, sorry to hear that, but thanks for stopping by anyway. And Coffee's Forge says, have a great evening, everyone. Thanks for a great stream, Roy and Jessica. Very welcome. Thank you, GWI. Thank you, Coffee's Forge. Sorry you guys got to go, but I appreciate it. Again, we'll pick this up again next live stream as well. So thank you for sticking around. Really do appreciate it. Let's go to the anvil. We'll get this done real quick here. We'll go ahead and straighten that out, that flower bloom out. While I still got some heat left in it, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my next petals. guys seeing how that's turning out so when I'm focusing this hammer I'm focusing it kind of like a half on half off blow or just inset just a little more on the edge uh, coming in from just the edge of the piece just slightly and then driving that piece down and out like I'm scooping out the material and that's what's providing that there well that's looking pretty good look good to everybody hopefully it does all right, I'll get this back hot again. And while that heats back up, I'm gonna go back over to the anvil. Now I'm gonna trade out my tooling. I'm gonna trade out this round ball punch that we have. I'm gonna set that down and out of the way. And we're gonna put in an eyeball punch. So this is just like a round, 
depression. It's basically a similar depression of the other. It's like a negative. This is the positive made the negative, like so. So, so we're going to put that in there, hopefully before our piece burns up to oblivion. Get my tong clip on there. So there we have it. Now we'll work on this piece. Right back to the anvil top. I gotta line this up somewhat to center. That's gonna be the main key here. And I've got a little bit I need to pull out on my next little lobe, but there you have it. Hopefully that looks pretty cool everybody. What do you think? Can you see that? See it really well? Good. All right. I'll get one more little tiny heat on there and switch my tooling again. If you're going to be switching your tooling a lot, you may not want to put the tong clip on. You may just want to hold it by hand. If you're constantly swapping tooling, if you've got tong held tools, you may not want to actually put on the tong clip when you do this process. All right, go back to the anvil. You good? Okay. Okay. With this ball punch, you can really shape this thing, this flower, out the way you want. That's what's kind of nice. You can kind of just work it all around and get this to kind of shape out however you like it to be to where you can even things up nicely. But at the end of the day, it's a flower, so don't go too crazy. Don't go too crazy with it. All right, so one last heat. We will take that and get just a fuzz more curve to it, I think. But before I run my mouth too much, we will grab the ring and we'll see how that's looking. It's looking pretty good, I think. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Is that showing up well? Looks good. Good? Does that look good? It does. Okay. Yeah, so I need to bring that flower in just a tad. So I'm going to do that now. Get it one more heat on there, right up near the bloom. And so I don't squash any of my petals, I'm going to go ahead and switch to using a little wooden hammer. Just a, a wooden mallet. Thank you, JK Canvas. Appreciate you, brother. So we're just going to switch to the little wooden mallet just so we don't end up marring our pedal. You go back to the anvil. I'm sorry if I'm going too fast for you, Jess. But okay. so we're going to take that sad little flower, just a sad little flower. We're going to tuck it in just a bit more, make it really lean over there. Why not? I think it looks good. Now we'll brush it. Brush this. Got one area here I need a hammer on. That I'm not liking the transition of. There we go. That's looking nice. Okay, so there you have it. There's that element. And if we take the ring, which I don't know if this thing's, yeah, it's still hot. <laughs> if it starts sizzling your gloves, it's probably too hot. There you have it. So that's how far we got in one evening. Can they see that okay? Oh, yeah. Everything yeah. good? Yep. They can see it. So that's how far we got. That's the direction we're heading. Again, this is just going to be a really simple little colonial trivet. So now that we got those elements made up, in the next, in the next live stream we will probably work, uh, don't hold me to this, but in the next live stream we will probably work at making the foot, the feeding. 
the feet, if you will. We will probably work on those pieces. Um, that way we have all of our components together, so when I start fitting everything up, I can start seeing how everything's going in relation um, without going too far on this piece. Uh, now, obviously, I could take a different route if I decide to forge weld this, we'll do that next live stream. But that's gonna take a little bit of debt, and it's gonna take a little bit of careful fitting and forge welding to make that come out looking nice. So um, I'll do most of the fit up work before the live, and then I will show what we've done and then finish the weld in the next live, and then maybe go on to the fading. It might only be a two live stream at Extravaganza. So, comments, Jess, questions before we go? Like that? I shall address them. <laughs> Black Collar Ironworks, he sent us a $5 super chat, and he says, for all the super chats I missed, and then there's about 50 little clappy hands after that. I'm not gonna try to count them all. <laughs> yes, that should catch you up. <laughs> this should catch you up good. Uh, Hans, Charming Hollow Forge, thank you for the $20 super chat. He said, hey, I said I'm back. I didn't leave because of the Anvil giveaway thing. I don't need or want it. I had a meeting, but it got postponed. So you are back. And Mr. Coffee came back too. It's like, we're going so long, everybody's coming it's back. Christmas. It's like Christmas all over again. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, I know you're not here just for the anvil. You guys have been here before we started giving away free stuff. So thank you, thank you. Been big supporters of my channel. Can't thank you enough. Really, that's, I, I just can't say that enough. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. I hope everybody had a good time. Did everyone have a good time tonight? If you did, let us know in the comments section. Um, I'd really like to know. Um, I know it wasn't in the most perfect setup here. It's been, it's like 19 degrees right now and and snowy. Um, one quick, uh, quick key there. I did have somebody talk about snow a little bit, cold, how to how to stay forging in it. And um, if you're in an uninsulated shop, or maybe you don't have a shop, maybe you just have a tree over your head, and you gotta. I saw one guy's photo. I will not complain. <laughs> I will not complain about my uh, uh, my snow inside my shop. This guy literally had to tunnel. <laughs> and the name's slipping me right now. If I remember the name, I'll try to remember the name and maybe even if he's okay with it, if he's in here and he's cool with it, I'll share the photo. Um, but there's a photo that was sent to me where the, it literally, it was like a wall of snow on each side and he had to shovel this wall of snow just to get to the forge area that was like surrounded by snow. So it was like an ice cavern. I'm like, I'm like, man, when life gives you lemons, you swim in lemonade. <laughs> you know? he, he really did it. It was great. It, it was a great photo. So, so I won't complain about my snow, uh, my snow covered shop anymore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's fun. It, it makes for great entertainment. I hope we've been entertaining. I hope we were worth your time on a Friday. Really do. Uh, super excited to do this. Super excited to do this. Super excited to get some of my orders done. I'm slowly progressing on two gentlemen's hammers that have been on the back burner for a really long time since the summer of last year. And I'm still progressing ever so slowly on them. And I'm thankful for those as well. I've been working pretty diligently at getting those, those things done. So yeah, but more stuff to come. So hopefully I'll have those done by next live stream or at a state that looks really good by next live stream. That way I can share off some glamour shots of what I've been working on uh, on the back end. And uh, that's something that's very rare, huh? Yeah. I mean, even there are certain times that I make stuff and we ship it out because we're so close to deadline and we barely get a couple snapshots of it before, before it heads out the door. Sometimes we don't even get that. So, yeah. so these won't be leaving the door without some major snapshotage happening. What we got going on, Jess, in the chat? Oh, that's all right. Eric Carter said, awesome video, at least the sound. Had to keep working, so didn't get to watch much. Uh, glad you enjoyed it, though. Rob O'Leary says, thanks for all you two do for our craft from Misty Mountain Metalworks. Very welcome. Misty Mountain Metalworks. Is it on my mic now? Yes. I'm just making sure. And by the way, thank you. Um, was it Rob O'Leary who said about the audio? Rob O'Leary, Rob, Rob O'Leary, or, yeah, but anyways, um, 
By the way, Eric Carter. Eric Carter, thank you for, for that compliment. It is very difficult, a lot more difficult, I think, than video. In order to get video right, that's one thing, but to get sound right, that's, phew, that's another thing entirely. So th that, that really makes me happy, really, really pleased. I'm glad the audio worked well um, for you, for your listening pleasure. I'm glad that worked out great. Uh, thank you, Nobody, for the $10 super chat. He said, thanks for all your content and advice and hoping for a pros prosperous 2020 for us all. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for all the super chats. Really do, do really do appreciate those. And uh, real quick, you know, before we go, uh, you know, if anybody would be interested at some point in time and just doing like a blacksmith Q&A, I know I've been doing some um, like blacksmith questions of the day kind of thing. If people would be interested in doing a blacksmith Q&A live stream where it's just me sitting down in front of the camera and, you know, just chatting it up to you. Kind of like the old days when we did the business streams um, like that to where you guys can just get any of your questions answered and us maybe throw one of those in there, you know, like a wild hair moment every now and then. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, drop Drop us a yes sir or something in the comment section if, if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, I like doing those. I like interacting. I like answering questions. I know when we do giveaways and some of this other stuff, we are like super busy with the giveaways and then the projects and things of that nature. So it's kind of hard to balance that. You want a project that's like not lame. Like, hey, I'm going to just draw tapers all night tonight. And you're like, woo, what fun I'm having on a Friday night, right? Like, so... Um, Again, like keep the content interesting enough, but at the same point have time to actually answer everybody's questions or try, attempt to answer as many questions as we can. Sometimes that's a bit difficult. So uh, let us know. I'm sure they're commenting right now. About that. Uh, not, that, not quite that fast, but um, Dustin Smith says great idea. Rick Kirby says great idea also. Neil Graham says that would be cool. Wayne Heights says sounds like a good idea. Nobody says yes, sir. Charger Demon says Roy Rant live stream, LOL. And BS, S, BS Small and just says sounds good. Awesome. Okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, so we might do that. Um, I promised I was going to give away two more chisels and punches for all those of you who have behaved yourself and stayed to the end. We have a square punch. Let's go over to the anvil, Jessica. Are you there? I'll wait. You there? So we're going to be giving away a square punch. And then we will also be giving away another slitting chisel. So, all right. So, oh, by the way, and if I didn't mention it to everybody in the stream, these are made from like 5160. So if you do have to heat treat them or whatever, they are a 5160 equivalent. I don't know that exactly for sure, for sure, but they literally harden up and test just like 5160 of some known 5160 I have in the shop. So they're very super comparable. This is a scrap steel that I started with, but it's almost like dead ringer in performance. So anyways, if that matters to you, in my shop, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a tool that does the job. So we're gonna give away the square punch first. So we're gonna set that down. I'm gonna get the gavel in the hand and... All right, this one is going to Denise Barrett who says, hi. Hi, Denise. <laughs> Welcome, Denise Barrett. Good to have you. I was just showing off uh, Drayson's uh, JT's earlier. I was showing off his, uh, his copper little flux thing that he made me and tiny little flux spoon. <laughs> Maybe we'll use that next live stream. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do the cardinal sin of actually doing some flux. <laughs> uh, all right. So then we're going to take giveaway the slitting chisel next. Good? All right, this one is going to Brian Neely who says, I'll take it. Well, congratulations, Brian Neely. You got it. <laughs> Again, contact us, Denise and Brian, with your shipping address, things like that. That way we have it on file and we'll get those shipped out to you free of charge. Super appreciate it. 
Also, I'll show off this right before we leave here, and this will be the end. This will be the end. To beat all ends, I know we keep saying we're going. I promise we're going. We are. We're gone. We're almost there. Whoa! So this is where we're at. Oh! Oh! Anvil down! Anvil down! Good thing it's made out of solid steel. <laughs> Well, it was pretty, yeah. Well, you don't catch things that are heavier than you or things that are even anything that's even slightly lighter than you. You don't go and catch it by your bare hands. All right, so this is where we're at so far on this. Um, if you all haven't seen the live streams, we made a hardy tool. We also made a uh, Bic, a Bic iron for the hardy as well. So this is what it's shaped up with. If you guys haven't seen the videos on that, or maybe you're just joining us in the stream and the ones that we're gonna be giving away, we'll be giving away an anvil like this one coming straight from the manufacturer. Little 66 pounders. We'll be giving those away here very, uh, very, very soon in the next live stream. Again, you can find out the information there. But yeah, I'm really liking this anvil. This anvil is a lot of fun. It's a lot of quiet now, which is a lot better. Of course, it still would benefit from having a magnet under the horn, because um, if you hold that, it quiets it down quite a bit more. So, but uh, yeah, I'm really liking, really liking this little anvil. Um, I think they're a sweet deal if you're getting them online. They're a sweet deal as far as a beginner anvil, if you're just getting set up. Um, mentioning, are you laughing over there? They're, yeah, they're cracking a couple of jokes about the anvil being down. Um, Stress Master says, anvil abuse, call HHS. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we'll be giving these, uh, I'll be giving one of these away in, in the next live stream. And then, and that's for sure, for sure this time. So um, I was going to give one away this live stream, but like I said, we were running way behind. Logistics didn't work out today to do it. So the next live stream we will. And, uh, and the heads up is the other, the other anvil that was won um, ended up, and the guy's name was again, Jess, that won it. You remember right off the top of your head? Okay, anyways, channel names. They get confusing sometimes. Anyways, he won it, he enjoyed it. It got to him safe and sound, it's great. And he's just a starting blacksmith, so he's just getting himself set up. So super awesome, glad that happened. Um, also, upcoming videos this month. Hopefully you all aren't sick and tired of anvils because, well, I'm just reviewing a whole bunch of them. So there are a bunch more anvil video surprise, little sneak peek for you guys there. There are gonna be a lot more other anvil review videos, comparison testing between anvils. There's gonna be a lot of that going on this year. So prepare yourselves. It is the year of the anvil after all. I will be doing that because I think that that will I think I can best serve the audience, you guys out there. Um, obviously, I still wanna do a few tutorial videos in there. I've got a few decorative videos I'm working on as well. of just some of my own personal projects I wanna work on um, this year. But I think I can best serve the audience that watches us by giving some guidance on, you know, where you can best spend your money so to speak, best bang for your buck kind of deal, getting, because we seem to have a lot of new people. A lot of new people, guys who are just starting off, maybe they don't have the best hammer, maybe they're looking to upgrade, these sort of things. Um, and I really hope to do a lot of different types of reviews on those things. Not because I want to become an unboxing channel. Um, this is a phase, it'll end, I assure you, because my pocketbook <laughs> is hurting, screaming. <laughs> right now, um, but uh, I'm hoping the content will be valuable to you and you guys will be able to say, hey, Roy bought that anvil, so I didn't have to. Roy tested that anvil, so I didn't have to, you know, and so that way you can keep the three and four hundred dollars in your pocket and, uh, you know, spend it on something that's actually going to help you out a lot better. And then plus having the opportunity to win some anvils and other great tools throughout the year. So that's it. You guys kind of got the a bit of a mouthful. What's our plan for 2020? Keep doing epic and awesome content. Hopefully you guys will find that um, 
valuable going forward. And uh, that, that'll be it, I think, unless you have any other comments. And, and I, I do have to, yeah. Couch Forge Company, I believe he just squeezed in right at the end of the live stream with a $100 super chat. So thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Couch Forge Company, um, for squeezing right in at the end of the live stream. He didn't have a comment? No? He was like, oh, he's just like, here. That's right. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> I can't mic drop. I have a lapel. <laughs> there. <laughs> I just thumped it. Some people just got blasted in the ear. Oh, no. <gasps> Boom. <laughs> I apologize to everyone who is listening through earbuds right now for my bad behavior. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to crack up. I should call it an evening. Oh. <laughs> I think the fr frozen cold has went to my brain, so. All right, until next time. Thank, thank you, each and every last one of you. God bless you, have a wonderful week, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>